Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, lecture number 47, we continue our discussion of chemistry, part 5, and we, uh, we're going to finish up our discussion of bonding. Today we're going to talk about covalent bonds or the sharing of electrons. If you remember, ionic bonds, whether it's monatomic or polyatomic, is giving and taking. So you have two bonds, right? Here we're going to share electrons, so there's going to be no ions, okay? Um, we're going to learn some prefixes, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, 5, hexa, 6, hepta, 7, octa, 8, nonna, 9, deca, 10. You'll see how we use these in a second. Okay, so naming... Uh, um, Covalent bonds is actually very, very simple. And I want to show you two well-known examples. Everybody in class, everybody should know this, right? From everyday knowledge. Okay, so two well-known examples. One is carbon monoxide, monoxide, right? You, don't, you drop the extra O and make it monoxide. See, there's one oxygen, monoxide. You could say monocarbon monoxide, but... The monocarbon, nobody ever writes if the first uh, element is, is one. Here we have carbon dioxide, di, because there's two oxygens. You could say monocarbon dioxide, but again, the mono in front of the carbon is uh, traditionally and uh, historically not said. Okay, so let's do a few examples, okay? Sulfur trioxide, okay? We could have monosulfur trioxide. Tri means one. I use a red pen. Okay, tri means one, so we have S O three. Isn't that beautiful? Look at how smart we are. Isn't it great? Hepta phosphorus. Hepta is what? Hepta is seven. Phosphorus P seven. Tetra is four. Fluorine fluoride. Now I don't know if these. I know sulfur trioxide exists. I don't know if hepta phosphorus tetra fluoride exists, but I don't really care. We're just doing examples, okay? So these are Mancini made up elements in, in another universe, okay? Penta nitrogen, so penta is five, N five. Hexa chloride, hexa is what? Hexa is six chlorines. Wow, so easy, right? Don't get these wrong. These are very, very easy and don't overthink these problems, okay? Carbon tetrachloride. So again, it could be monocarbon, but we write C. Tetra is four, Cl4. Carbon tetrachloride. Just to tell you, carbon tetrachloride is one of those sprays you can use uh, to clean your electronics. Uh, it cleans electronic devices. Also, and this was from a former nursing student of mine who was an EMT, told me you could also get a buzz. You can get high on it. So a few years ago, one, one day we had class and one of the students who was the EMT told me that the night before they had an emergency and some young man, 20, 21, I don't know, they brought him in the ambulance to the hospital because he took, uh, uh, inhaled too much carbon tetrachloride to get a buzz and the kid died. Okay, so uh, computer cleaning stuff, carbon tetrachloride, d d don't ingest this and please don't ingest any bleach, okay? All right, so carbon tetrachloride is a cleaner, all right? Electronics cleaner, good test question, right? Penta iodine, penta is what? Penta is five, right? Penta iodine is five. Nonna, nonna, if I put another N in there, it would be nonna, which would be grandmother in Italian. But this is not a grandmother of bromide. It's nine bromines, right? So we put Br, nine. Penta iodine, nona bromide. Very, very simple, okay? So let's name the following, okay? We'll name them together, ready? I have P3Cl10. So remember, three is tri, so it's tri, phosphorus, and 10 is deca chloride, triphosphorus deca chloride. Let me see if I could write that. Tri phosphorus deca chloride. I'm going to write that on the second line. 
Notice the IDE ending. The root is chlor and we put I. Deca is the 10, okay? F8, S6, <clears throat> excuse me. Eight is octa, so this is octafluorine, octafluorine, octafluorine. S6, six is hexa, so we have hexa sulfide, hexa. Again, I have to write it on different lines, sul. Five. How's that? Okay. Octafluorine hexasulfide. Again, I apologize to all my chemistry friends. I'm just making these up for examples. I don't know if they exist. Not important for us. All right, let's look at Cl2O5. So chlor two chlorines, five oxygens. Okay. So two is di. So we have di chlorine. Five is penta. Right, this is the prefix. So we'd have penta oxide. That's good. That's about that. That's that, that's uh, pretty much what I want to say. Let's let's do another example here. Suppose I do. Suppose I do this. Suppose I do. Um, <laughs> MG, MG3, P2. Okay, let's look at this. So what's the name of this? Is it trimagnesium diphosphide? Trimagnesium diphosphide no this is magnesium phosphide why isn't it trimagnesium diphosphide because magnesium is a metal phosphorus is a non-metal metal non-metal non ionic bond ionic bonding we don't use the Mono, di, tri, tetra. We don't use these, right? So this is not trimagnesium diphosphorus. It's magnesium phosphide. I'm sorry, it's not trimagnesium diphosphide. It's just magnesium phosphide. So be very careful. Don't be fooled. Look at your periodic table. See what are two nonmetals and see if it's covalent. And then you use the mono, di, tri, tetra, Penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, deca. You use all that stuff. But if it's an ionic bond, we don't use these prefixes. So this just is magnesium phosphide, not trimagnesium diphosphide. So be very careful of that. Otherwise, the covalent bonding, if I ask on the test to name it, come on. Tri, uh, uh, deca, octa, hexa, di, penta. It's very, very simple. Periodic table, know what your metals are, know what your nonmetals are, and then you can name things and know about the oxidation states. All right, I think that's pretty much what we want to say about naming these compounds. All right, so we know how to name ionic compounds, we know how to name non ionic compounds, we know how to name group A compounds, we know how to use the group B, the group B with the transition metals, and the transition metals remember, had variable oxidation states. How do we know which oxidation states? That's the stock system. And so um, cobalt-4 tells you the oxidation number is plus 4, that cobalt wants to give plus 4. Mercury-3 tells you that mercury wants to give plus 3. Mercury-2 wants to give 2 electrons. Iron three, ferric, wants to give three electrons and so forth. So thing in parentheses tells you in the stock system what the oxidation number is and how many electrons it wants to give away. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's all I have to say about compounds and uh, bonding for now. All right, all right, be safe, take care, see you next time.